Hi, my name is David Fraser. I'm a privacy, internet, and technology lawyer with the Canadian law firm of McGinnis Cooper. In this channel, I try to provide educational and informative content about Canadian privacy and technology law. Today, I'm going to be talking about what privacy policies are really for under Canadian privacy laws. They're everywhere, on every website, seldom read, but their purpose in Canada is a little misunderstood. I'm going to limit this discussion to Canada's current federal privacy, private sector privacy law called the Personal Information Protection and Electronic Documents Act, or PIPEDA. But most of my comments would be applicable for the substantially similar laws in British Columbia and Alberta. I'm going to start with my usual disclaimer. This is intended to be a relatively general overview of the law for educational and informative purposes only. This is a complicated area of the law with a whole bunch of nuances. I'll be talking about the general rules, but there may also be exceptions to those rules. Of course, if you have any specific legal questions, or if you're dealing with a situation yourself, you should seek qualified legal advice. And all opinions expressed in this video and on this channel are mine and mine alone, and should not be attributed to my law firm or to any of its clients. And of course, I'm only talking about the law in Canada. Privacy and internet law can vary significantly from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, and part of the purpose of this video is to elaborate on some of those differences. I think most people who follow this sort of stuff know that Canadian private sector privacy law is based on consent, knowledgeable, informed consent. There's often an assumption that the knowledgeable and informed parts come from people reading privacy policies. That's not the way it usually works, however. I think we all know that people seldom read privacy policies. At least based on my own informal polling of my students, fewer people actually read privacy policies than ever before. Let's look at the Act and see what it actually says about consent. To be informed consent, you have to look at Principles 2 and 3, which are taken from the Canadian Standards Association Model Code for the Protection of Personal Information. Principle 2 says, The purposes for which personal information is collected shall be identified by the organization at or before the time the information is collected. It then goes on and says, the identified purposes should be specified at or before the time of collection to the individual from whom the personal information is collected. Depending upon the way in which the information is collected, this can be done orally or in writing. An application form, for example, may give notice of these purposes. It does not say that it should be simply set out in a privacy policy. Principle three is about consent. It says simply, the knowledge and consent of the individual are required for the collection, use, or disclosure of personal information except where inappropriate. We can ignore the except for inappropriate part because all of the exceptions to the consent principle are enumerated in Section 7 of the Act. Principle 3 then goes on and says, the principle requires knowledge and consent. Organizations shall make a reasonable effort to ensure that the individual is advised of the purposes for which the information will be used. To make consent meaningful, the purposes must be stated in such a manner that the individual can reasonably understand how the information will be used or disclosed. Again, it does not just say throw it in a privacy policy. So you're really only confident if you have adequate consent, if you are confident the individual has actually been apprised of the purposes for the collection, use, or disclosure of their personal information. In most cases, you can't be confident that any particular visitor to your website has scrolled to the bottom and has even seen the link to the privacy policy, let alone actually clicked on it. In some cases, however, you could use the privacy policy to identify purposes, and that would be if you require a new visitor to your website or someone who is just creating an account to read and acknowledge the privacy policy as part of that process. In that case, you have made the effort to bring all the purposes to the user's attention at or before the time the information is collected. In other cases, you might give users clear notice that your privacy policy has been updated. Ideally, you'd require them to read it. And either making them review it or at least telling them to do so is probably adequate. So if a privacy policy in Canada isn't for getting consent, what is it for? Well, to find out, we have to flip forward to the eighth principle, entitled openness. Spoiler alert, privacy policies in Canada are not are about being open and transparent. They should also be where you go for answers for any privacy-related questions. Let's read Principle 8, starting with the main principle. An organization shall make readily available to individuals specific information about its policies and practices related to the management of personal information. 
It doesn't come right out and say, thou shalt have a privacy policy, but essentially it means that. Subprincipal 8.1 says, organizations shall be open about their policies and practices with respect to the management of personal information. Individuals shall be able to acquire information about an organization's policies and practices without unreasonable effort. This information shall be made available in a form that is generally understandable. To be open about what you do with personal information, make it really easy to find and make it easy to understand. Then there is a list of all the additional things that must be in an organization's privacy policy. It says the information made available shall include the name or title and the address of the person who is accountable for the organization's policies and practices and to whom complaints or inquiries can be forwarded. This essentially means the contact information for the organization's privacy officer. It doesn't have to name them, but there has to be a way to reach that person if there are any complaints or questions. Paragraph B, the means of gaining access to personal information held by the organization. In Canada, individuals have a right of access to their personal information, subject to some limitations. This means you have to let individuals know about this right and let them know how to exercise it. I'll likely do a full video soon on data subject access rights in Canada. Paragraph C then says, a description of the type of personal information held by the organization, including a general account of its use. So you have to say what information you collect and how you use it. Paragraph D calls for a copy of any brochures or other information that explain the organization's policies, standards, or codes. This essentially says you have to have a privacy policy to communicate all this information. Finally, paragraph E says what personal information is made available to related organizations, e.g. subsidiaries. So if you share information between related companies, you should call this out here. Also, the Privacy Commissioner of Canada says that the privacy policy should include information on whether personal information is stored outside of Canada. Who reads privacy policies? In my experience, there are only three categories of readers. Regulators who want to make sure you have a mature privacy program and you've checked the boxes, people with questions about the handling of their personal information, and then people with concerns or complaints about the handling of their personal information. Privacy policy should be written with those audiences in mind. So at the end of the day, what are privacy policies for? At the very least, they're so you can say that you complied with principle eight. That's the bare minimum. But what else? It should serve as a reference for anyone who has any questions or concerns about how an organization handles personal information. Someone reading it should be able to get a handle on what information the organization collects, understand how it's used, and know who to contact with any questions or concerns. So thank you very much for tuning in. I hope this has been useful and informative. If you have any comments on this video or any suggestions for topics you'd like to see in this channel, please leave them in the comments below. If you find this sort of content to be interesting or informative, please subscribe. If you also click the bell, you'll be notified of new videos as they're posted. Thanks so much.